hello. I am finally back with another edition of Schoology Teacher Tips. So here's a next set of my top 10 tips and tricks about Schoology. All right, so alternative to Google Drive assignments. So yes, assigning Google Drive or OneDrive assignments does have its advantages. However, I prefer this method. Why? It copies other classes seamlessly, so you don't have to do that whole reattach the Google or OneDrive assignment. Uh, you don't need to unsubmit. Uh, students can just resubmit another assignment. 100% of my students have been able to do it this way. No difficulties. Okay, so I'm going to take you to Schoology and show you how it's done. Okay, here we go. I am in my practice course, and I'm going to add an assignment. Okay, and um, I'm just going to call this really simply cell worksheet. Okay, and uh, what I'm going to do is uh, complete the worksheet by either one, making a copy, two, downloading. A file. Now I have already worked with my students so they're very familiar with this process um, but I'm going to show you how I set up the assignment. Okay so here is the worksheet that I want them to use. All right what I need to do in the share settings is make sure it says anyone on the uh, anyone on the internet with this link can view. By default it's going to be at restricted. I don't want it at restricted. Okay so and then I'm going to go in here and copy this link. Right, so I'm going to go back to the assignment, paste the link, but what I'm going to do it where it says this edit question mark, I'm going to delete all of that and put the word copy in its place. Okay, click to make a copy and I'm going to attach that. Okay, now I need to attach a file. So if a student doesn't have a Google account or it's not working, they need to actually work with the document. All right, so I've already downloaded it from my um, drive and now I just need to attach it. So I'm gonna click to attach the file. I'm gonna go to downloads and then I'm gonna look for this cell theory worksheet, which should be the last thing that I've downloaded. But as you can see, embarrassingly, I have a lot of things that I've downloaded, it takes a minute. There we go, that's the one that I want. I'm going to open that and there's a copy, okay? Um, I can put a due date, so let's just pretend and set the point value, okay? Here is the brilliant thing. When I copy this to courses, okay? Um, and I choose a folder, I choose a category, it is going to have those attachments still there. I save myself that step of having to go back in and reattach something. Do it this way, trust me, okay? And then uh, I'm gonna, oops, I don't wanna actually do that. And I also disable comments, all right? And that's it, create it. Okay, there we go. Now I'll just show you really quickly when you click on it. Um, it's going to download the file. You could view it this way. If you click this, it's going to say, oh, hey, you need to make a copy. That's it. All right. Highly recommend this way. All right. So let's close out these. All right. So here we are back here. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about how to create personal learning objectives. So Schoology has this great feature. You can title to rubrics, to assessments, to assignments, to pages, discussions. It gives you a whole lot of ability to track, okay? So um, I have built mine in a group, but you have to begin it in resources. So in resources, you're gonna click learning objectives. So let's just uh, make a test folder, okay? And in the test folder, I wanna add, and right here, custom learning objective, okay? So say I am talking just about Google assignments, um, Students can add titles to a document. All right, so whatever custom learning objectives you want, um, <clears throat> you can choose them here. 
okay? And then when you're ready, so say, okay, I have finished building this folder. Now I wanna copy it to a course right here, just copy to, and um, you're gonna need to put it into a group resource. So find, change it to a group, or in a course, you can simply pull it in. You don't have to actually have it sitting in the course because it's in your resources, but you can copy it to a group as well, okay? And then let me just show you really quickly in a course, okay, when I add materials, so add an assignment. Look, I can add a learning objective. If you add a page, look, you can add a learning objective, okay? So like I said, you could do it in assessment questions. Um, you can even do it in um, when you add a discussion. Okay, same thing. Gives you a whole lot of flexibility to track how students are doing. Fantastic. All right, let's look at the next thing. So here we are back here. Um, extra credit. All right, so when you are building extra credit as an assignment, you can create an assignment exactly like you normally would. The only thing you want to do is change the points to zero. So then when you give the students a score, it's going to add those extra points. Make sure you choose the correct category that you want it in. All right. And um, again, I always disable comments. Just saves me a little bit of hunting around for comments. So again, extra credit, all you need to do is assign it zero points. And then you want to add 15 points to give a student a score of 15. It gives them an extra 15 points in that category. Okay. All right, so let's go on to the next one. Okay, the next one is grading categories. Helps organize your grade book, makes things a little bit easier. You do it from grade setup. You pick your categories. If you haven't set this up yet, you start by doing this, add. Choose the name of your category, um, whether you want it by total points or by percent. And if you want to drop any of the grades, and then what weight. So if you want this category to just be 10% of their grade or 50%, and then you would create. Once you create all of your categories, it should add up to 100, okay? Now what these stars mean over here is just the default. So most of my work is gonna show up as classwork, so I have this starred so it's the default. If most of your work is in assessments, choose that as your default. Again, same over here. I just want a numeric scale for my default. If you choose this, that would be your default scale, okay? So that's categories. And then when you make assignments, you're going to choose which category to put it in. And then when you're looking at the grade book, here's the benefit of doing that. You can view, um, when you do materials, you can just pick specific categories to view. I just want to look at homework. Okay. I just want to look at assessments. Okay. It's definitely a benefit. All right. So let's go back. What's next on our list? Grade statistics, okay? So grade statistics um, enable you to see how students did on an assignment, okay? So let's look over here. Let's just say this assignment right here. Click the three dots and go to view statistics. It's going to show you uh, how many people did it, what was the maximum point value, what was the lowest grade, what was the average. Okay, it just gives you some quick information about how students did. And since my courses are linked, it's going to cover all of those courses at once. So I can see how all of my anatomy students did at once. I don't have to go into each individual course. All right, so you can do that for any um, assignment. Okay, if on the other hand, it is um, an assessment, you can't view the statistics. You'd have to go into, assess, into the assessment and view uh, the reporting feature, which also has great information. Okay. So iframe generator. Okay, these are the measurements I typically use. Okay. Um, for an iframe generator, okay, to work. So I'm just going to go to uh, class kick. All right, so say this is the website that I want to embed, okay? And I just want it to look like this. All right, so I'm gonna go into my iframe generator. 
if I'm putting it in a page, I usually do this 900, 600. Okay, I allow the scroll bar. Okay, now I'm going to paste the URL right here. I'm going to click generate. I'm going to copy this. Okay, now I'm going to go to, oops, I'm going to go to Schoology. Okay, and I'm going to add a page so I can just show you what this um, looks like. And I've discussed iframe generators before, but it really is a great feature um, to allow students to work within Schoology without clicking on outside pages because sometimes that's problematic. So the ability to just continue to work within Schoology is a huge advantage. Um, and why I recommend if a site works with the iframe generator, absolutely test it out. Okay, so last kick. And I just switched to HTML, paste that, which I just copied, um, and create. Okay, now I'm just going to open it up so I can show you what it looks like. Um, here we go. So literally now the website is embedded directly in Schoology and all students have to do is um, access it from in here. Okay, love it. It's awesome. Super great feature of Schoology. All right, let's see what next. Oh, comments with grades. So there are a couple ways to attach comments um, through grades. Uh, and I'm going to show you that really quickly. Okay, so here I am in Schoology looking from a student view and I'm looking at grades. Okay. When you click that in next to the score and you write a comment and you click show to student, here is where that comment shows up. Okay, so students absolutely can see this. They just need to go to grades. Okay, and um, so you can see here's another comment that was made. All right, so that's easy. Students can also view a rubric. So look, they open this up. They can see, oh, these are the points that I got on um, that assignment. Anytime there's a speech bubble over here, look, there is the comment I left for them on the rubric. So students absolutely can see comments on rubric. Absolutely can see the comments that you leave them when you check that little show to student box. They just have to navigate to the grades section in order to do it. Okay. Uh, linking courses. So let me just show you um, quickly about linking courses. It's only available um, for courses that have the same course code. And also, if the school year has started, please do not link courses. Um, it's going to mess with your gradebook, potentially deleting everything. Okay, so, but here is where you would do it. You would click this wheel in courses and right here, link existing section. I can unlink, but again, I'm definitely not going to do that because um, that could wreak havoc on my gradebook. If there is not another section, you can't link it. So uh, right here, I could do it for this. So I have study hall, so link existing section. I can just choose, oh, I want to link this um, section to this one. This has a different code. So you see 43 versus 45, so I can't link them. It has to match exactly. All right, so I'm going to cancel this because I don't actually want to do it, but that's how you link them. The benefit of linking is this. In my course, um, I have all of the folders and all of the courses are linked. So if I need to move a folder or change an assignment, I have to do it one time. That's it. Huge time saver. Okay. Uh, locking assignments. All right, so... Let's go uh, to an assignment. Let's just pick this one and we'll edit it. Okay. Uh, and if it's an unlinked course right here at the bottom is where the lock is going to show up and you can lock it right now. So you just, that's it. I'm not taking any work past this point or you could click lock on. And that's what I do when I make um, an assignment. I lock it at the end of the marking period. So our marking period, next one is going to close on um, the 29th, but I give students the availability to turn it until that Monday morning. So I would um, lock it here. You could set the time, whatever you want. Um, and this will not allow students to submit work after that date. Okay, so whatever date you want to set for allowing work, locking 
is amazing. Then you're not going to get a flood of work from first marking period now that you're in second marking period. Okay. So I just highly recommend when you build your assignments, just lock them for the last day of the marking period, or if you have a different um, arrangement in your district. Okay, I already went over how students are going to access comments, but how are teachers going to leave those comments? Let's check it out. All right, so I'm going to move into my practice course, though, uh, just so I don't have to hide names in the gradebook. Okay, so I'm going to go uh, just to my gradebook and find something that had a submission. Here we go. So here is submission from a student. That's me. Here's how you can leave a comment. A student will um, get a notification about this, but often students aren't going to check it, but they will get a notification. Up here, here's where you can leave a comment. Make sure you check this box, show to student, and that's how students are going to be able to see that comment right in their grade. Okay. And there you have it, the next set of top 10. Stay tuned soon, we're going to be up to part four.